YouTube land. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review of Grim Tales of Terror Volume 4 uh, by Zenscope. Zenoscope. Uh, I loved this series when it was coming out. I, I haven't seen a new issue in floppies in quite a while, so I don't know if it's still going but I am getting the I'm trying to get all the collections here in trade and this is actually a hardback I ordered it a long time ago and it was just waiting 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 it and it showed up Friday it was supposed to show up uh, yesterday which was Monday but it came in Friday and so I read it, just finished it up this morning, and wow. It is, these stories are so interesting. It basically follows, you know, there is one connecting thread in each one of the stories. There is, uh, what is her name? Uh, I'm kind of doing this, you know, with... A little bit of light, little lack of light, just in the, you know, for the mood of darkness. You know, it's a horror story. So, you have the red head right there. The red-headed woman. Uh, she is the central character. She's like a death type thing. And she's interwoven in each one of the stories. Somehow. You know, generally as a warning to the characters. Uh, there's, I think, what, how many different... Yes, there are 13 different issues in this uh, book. Uh, all horror stories with a little unique twist. Some of them are riffs on urban legends like... Uh, Getting a chain letter. There's something on the Bermuda uh, Bermuda Triangle. You get things about like these, you know, super fancy ones uh, called off the menu, where it's a super fancy restaurant where you find out what's really on the menu for these people. Um, and they're all, you know, fairly short, but very well done. And the art is just incredible. That is one thing I love about uh, these books is the art is so well done. And of course, at the end of each one, they show the different covers for that episode. Uh, my three favorite stories... were the last three. Uh, one was Skinwalkers. That was, the, the, you know, third of the last. Uh, if you don't know anything about the Skinwalker legend, it is basically similar to a werewolf that can come. It's an Indian, you know, American, Native American uh, belief that, you know, that people can change into wolves, coyotes, diff any type of animals, or take the look of a person. And so there's been some murders on a reservation, and the tribal police officer who's in charge of it wants to take care of it himself, but they have to get someone from the FBI out to help. And, uh, it was, you know, I began to suspect that, you know, the, uh, the woman who was the FBI agent was also a skinwalker. And it was true, it turned out. So that one was good. And then you also have, let's see, the Ouija board. Uh... It's, you know, it starts out innocuous enough, just about, you know, some guy sitting there t recounting a story about his buddy who could pick up 
in a girl at a bar. Right. And so it was him and his friend, the person who was telling it and the, and the guy, they could, uh, they pick up any girl at the bar and he would, the guy would bring the girl back to his friend's house and meet him, him and the girl, the guy's wife, not the guys picking up the girls, but because he wanted, you know, them to like the girls and or so the story went. And so they bring one girl back. Oh, and, you know, then they'd go out, the, the two guys would go out to the garage and, you know, take care of business while they'd, you know, usually the wife would go you know, to bed. She wasn't, supposedly wasn't aware of what was going on. And the new girl brings out a, a, no, a Ouija board and things start going a little weird at that point, which is, again, the whole point of these stories. And then the last one is called Black Dahlia. It's about a crime reporter, novelist, true crime, investigating a new serial killer who was modeling the kills after different uh, serial killers over the years. And that one was very, very well done. Uh, so those are my three favorite. But if you haven't read any of these uh, stories, and if you can either find the, the the floppies in back issues or in collections or maybe get the trades, I suggest you do because these are some very well done books in story-wise and in art-wise. So anyway, I'm going to give this a 4.0 out of 5. And... Uh, let me know down, down in the comments below whether you've read these before, whether you like them or not, and uh, enjoy your comments.